we're going to start talking about projection operators in this video. So the first question is simply, what is this thing? Now you might think an inner product, but that would be the other way around. So this would work expressed in the, in the ket notation like this, but it's helpful to think through what it is if we actually switch to using our matrix notation. Now this is where we have to be careful and you really have to say, okay, this one is a ket. A ket is a column. One, zero. This one is my bra, which would then be one, zero. So now this is valid. We can do this. And you see it would go row, column, row, column. So that first entry is one times one is one. Then one times zero is zero. Zero times one is zero. Zero times zero is zero. So this guy here is a matrix. It's a two by two matrix because we're working in a, in a two dimensional basis here. So we call this a projection operator. And one way to think about it is that, for instance, if we, um, we can apply this to a state, for instance, and I'll go through that in a, in a different video, but this would be our projection operator of the, the plus plus state. Obviously, then, we could have our projection operator of spin down. And so again, we can think about this in the matrix notation. That would be 0, 1, and then 0, 1. So if we go and multiply that out, the first uh, row will both be 0 and then 0, 1. So again, 2 by 2 matrix. Now there's something kind of magical that happens here. If I add these two things together and note that these are the only two possible um, combinations if we're working in spin up and spin down, if I add these together, and it gets a little bit tricky to make sure that the plus that's on the outside is clearly not part of one of the states, what is this going to equal? Well, it's this plus that. If we think about this as a two by two matrix, what's up here? One plus zero. Here, zero plus zero. Here, zero plus zero. Zero plus one. That's the identity matrix, right? So that's, that's what this guy is. So our identity matrix, ones on the diagonals and everywhere else. This is actually a general idea that if we sum up all of the pieces that look like this in whatever system we're talking about, for spin one half, there's two possibilities. For spin one, there'll be three possibilities. You could have an energy basis where there's discrete possibilities, but an infinite number of them. That makes an infinitely big matrix. Um, as long as you add them all up, it will work out this way. And notice that in this case, we're working in the Z basis. These were our spin up Z, spin down z, and this is our z basis, but this is going to be a general idea that we can use mathematically. So another way to write this is if we sum over all possible uh, basis states, so there's different ways to write it, I'll write it this way. So all possible basis states, sum over i, that's going to give us that identity matrix, and that's always true. So this is going to be a helpful mathematical thing that we use to do certain proofs and certain transformations, and we'll talk more in a separate video about what the projection operator does if you're just working with one of them.